Hello there. Today I'm taking a look at an English wine, and this is Still by Hattingley. Um, it's 2020 vintage, um, and the wine is, although it's not written large on the label, that's 100% Chardonnay. Um, it's a lightly oaked Chardonnay, um, and evidently it was the first Chardonnay that the um, estate has produced. Um, relatively new operation. Hattingley was started in 2008 by somebody called Simon Robinson and Simon wanted to diversify his farming interests and I think he's been quite successful there because he's ended up with a, a state-of-the-art winery with a 600 tonne crush capacity and that's made them you know almost straight away one of one of England's larger wineries. Um, the 2020 vintage um, has been uh, is likely to be seen as one of the, the better recent vintages. Following on from two quite abundant vintages, it was a bit drier, and um, as a result, you've got slightly lower yields, but also the fact that it was dry at picking meant that there was very little disease pressure. The fruit all came in very clean and didn't need a lot of sorting, and also was able to stay on the vine just that little longer for a bit more flavor development. Um, probably why this is the first time they've, they've made a, um, a still wine. The fruit for this came from uh, vineyards in Kent and Essex, uh, whereas the, the winery is actually in Hampshire. Um, so possibly bought in fruit. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what the arrangement there is. Um, in terms of their approach to winemaking, they're trying to be as ecologically friendly as possible, and, and that's signified by the fact that they have the fritillary butterfly um, adorning their label, and evidently the, that was a butterfly that was um, uh, identified as a potential risk when they did various surveys before working on the winery, something they had to be careful to protect. Um, the particular wine is it's 100% hand-picked. Um, it's uh, crushed as whole bunches, and crushing as whole bunches gives you lovely clean juice to ferment. Uh, fermentation took place mainly in stainless steel tanks with temperature regulation, so cool and fresh. And they're trying, they were trying to make a style of wine similar to a sort of a Chablis sort of style, so fresh acidity, not too much oak, not too much sort of richness and fatness in the, in, in the wine. Um, so yes, I think 14.4% according to the label of the um, wine fermented in old oak casks. It's a very exact detail, but that's the one they've given us. They also say that um, largely the malolactic conversion was blocked. About 20%, about a fifth of the, the wine went through um, a malolactic conversion, just to take the, the, some of the sharpness off, off the, um, the crisp acidity that's, that's in the wine. Um, Apart from that, it wasn't fined at all, so it's suitable for vegetarians to drink, um, and it was just lightly filtered into bottle. Um, their are expectations for the wine to, to have, um, they, they, they reckon this is drinking sort of nicely and should be for the next year or so, but possibly they're underestimating that. I don't know, let's have a look and see. First thing to say is, colour-wise, not quite water white, there's a slight greenish tint to that, but I wouldn't say that was particularly yellow. Swirling it, it's only 12.5% alcohol, I'm not expecting it to particularly form legs on the glass and that's living up to that expectation. Let's have a look at the aromas, shall we? Gosh, the aromas are coming across straight away there is a sort of a, a mineral seashell sort of note. Um, as you examine it more there are lemony notes but also there's a real creaminess and just heading towards a sort of a slight butterscotch note. So there is there's a certain amount of sort of lees notes, a certain amount of um, influence perhaps from a little bit that little bit of malolactic conversion. It's not a huge amount of primary fruit, it's all very nicely married together. The um, none of the aromas stand out particularly, but it's that it's a slightly saline, slightly mineral seashell note that's coming to the fore to the most. Gosh, tasting that there really is a a very sharp at the front of the mouth crispness um, but actually the fact it's had a little bit of the malolactic conversion has stopped the sharpness from being really tart but there still is a, a green apple freshness and that I'm tasting that sort of mouth-watering acidity on of, of um, crisp malic acid on the sides of my tongue and that's really what's driving the, the certainly the attack of the wine um, as the flavours open up, there's a there's, a, there's a, a mid-weight, quite rich creaminess across the middle of the tongue. And that's a beautiful texture, actually. It's lovely and smooth. 
Um, it's lasting fairly well. The alcohol at 12.5%, not surprisingly, isn't really um, isn't really overlaying that fruit at all or interfering with it. That's allowing it to show itself. And then you're, you're ending up with a sort of a, a lemony crispness and uh, the creamy notes continuing. And they're, they're becoming a little more... They're becoming a little honeyed. There's not really a taste of honey, but they're heading towards that sort of butterscotchy richness at the very end there. Um, I mean, the wine's completely dry. I shouldn't suggest there's any sweetness, but there's a, a sort of rounded richness that I'm, I'm trying to describe there a little bit more. So, um, yeah, actually, in, in saying that they want this to be a, um, uh, a Chablis-style wine, I think that's a, a nice description of it. Um, I wouldn't say it's got a huge ageing potential, but it's... Um, probably good for another year or two at least and I think would be a lovely pairing with sort of um, fresh seafood um, shellfish that sort of thing um, yeah, very nicely balanced work I think they've done a good job there thank you very much for watching hope you found this interesting do please um, sign up to to follow us uh, do like and share and I hope you'll join us again bye now